Okay, in this video we're going to go over a new feature that it has come out in uh, QuickBooks 2012. All right, so it is the enhanced inventory. I know it's kind of confusing because we have the advanced inventory and then the enhanced, but um, advanced inventory is an add-on module to QuickBooks. Enhanced is built into the QuickBooks software. And basically what it does is it actually allows for an item receipt and a bill to be two separate transactions. So currently in uh, prior years of QuickBooks, or if you don't turn on this enhanced feature, what will happen is let's say that you have a purchase order uh, for five widgets and then you receive the five widgets. Let's go ahead in here and do this. We'll say for five cabinet pulls. Okay. And to save and close. So now when I receive the inventory without a bill, or with the bill, it doesn't matter. With the bill, it doesn't create the item receipt at all. So if I do the H hung and choose this guy, all the information flows through. I'm going to date this that we received it on December 2nd. Okay. And then I'm going to say save and close. Now I'm going to go ahead and enter the bill. And it says, hey, you have this item receipt. Okay. And I'm going to date the bill today. Now, before I save this, let me go into a chung in here. So you see the item receipt there on 12.2 for $360, okay? So once I save this, okay, now it's marked the, that the bill is received. If I go look in here again, that item receipt actually goes away, okay? Because it gets changed from an item receipt into a bill. And since I dated the bill on the 15th, that means we now no longer receive those items until 12.15. Okay, so this can cause a problem with inventory, obviously. This add a new feature that the enhanced inventory is fantastic. It's something that we've been asking for for years <laughs> to come from the QuickBooks product, but you do have, to, you know, you have to make sure that you're taking the proper precautions and make sure that this is something that you do want to turn on because there are some um, some little things that you need to uh, take into account. So first thing, how do we turn it on? Okay, so we're going to go up here under Preferences, Edit and Preferences. You're going to go down to Items and Inventory, and you have your Company Preferences. Again, notice we have Advanced Inventory Settings, but that is the added uh, annual subscription. But what we want to do is the Enhanced Inventory Receiving down here. Okay, so again, some precautions here. So you cannot turn it off once it's turned on. So once I click this enable button, it's going to give me that warning. Okay, it will make me do a backup, which is nice. You should always do a backup before do, doing anything. It could take a long time. Okay, if you are in um, a QuickBooks file that's pretty large and has a large amount of data, you might want to do it, run it, you know, overnight or something like that. Because basically what it's going to do is for every bill that you've ever had in the past, it's going to create an item receipt on the same date of the bill. You know, it's not going to go back and mess with the inventory there. On the same day as the bill, it creates an item receipt. So it's going to now have two transactions and it's got to go back and do that for every bill with inventory on it all the way back. Okay. So it can take a little bit of time. Um, also, uh, something that you would want to do before uh, turning on the advanced inventory receiving feature, which I just turned on, so you might want to run your profit and loss or your trial balance for years past to see if there are any changes uh, that have happened from doing this, some, some slight um, rounding errors, anything like that, because I've, I've seen a couple of, of uh, notices that that can happen. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. It's going to tell me it's got to close all windows to make this conversion. So it's going to do a backup. Now, before I uh, did this did this enhanced inventory, I actually printed out the inventory valuation detail report right here. So let's let that open up. And we'll let both systems go at the same time. Okay, so local backup. 
I'm going to not verify it for now, but you should usually verify it. I just want to get through so we don't have too much of time spent here. Use this location. Okay. So it's going to back it up. Now I did print out ahead of time the uh, a PDF of the inventory valuation detail report here. Okay. And uh, so you can see we have the item receipt of $50 here. We have a bill that's open of uh, $7,200. So what this program is going to do also is when it does the conversions, it's actually any bills that are entered in the system are going to be changed into item receipts. And then you'll have to re-enter the bill at that point. So you're going to see a little bit of movement. Uh, out of accounts payable so that you have to be aware of. So it's good to print out this inventory valuation detail report ahead of time. And I'll show you where we can find that. Okay, so now it says, you know, it's updated my company file. It took me 27 seconds. I love that Intuit tells us that from now on. So we can't complain that it takes too long. <laughs> All right, so it has 42 existing purchase orders updated, one item receipt, 197 bills, 118 item receipts from existing bills. Okay, so um, notice accounts payable was previously this amount, and the inventory offset account is was this amount. Now, the inventory offset account is where, where the balance sits. Well, when you receive your items, inventory goes up, and this inventory offset account goes up. And then once you enter your bill, the inventory offset account goes down uh, and the accounts payable account goes up. Okay, so now what it's telling us is that it, they made a couple changes. So there's 345920 that came out of your accounts payable and went into your inventory offset account. Okay, <clears throat> so now once we're in QuickBooks, let's go ahead and run that inventory, uh, that report. Again, inventory evaluation detail report. And if I look at it here, notice that that $7,200 is now an item receipt instead of a bill. So that's one of those ones that had uh, a balance in accounts payable and it got pulled from accounts payable and entered into the inventory offset account. Okay, so we would have to go back in and re-enter the bill, okay? Now, a couple of things to note on this. So from the home screen, I'm gonna go ahead and make a purchase order. And we'll do it for the Yi Chong again. And we're gonna do it for some cabinet poles again. And then also we're gonna do for some non-inventory parts, some trim. And we're gonna do it for some service services. Okay. So here's our purchase order to Chong. okay? So I'm gonna save this. And now when I go into my um, receive items screen, <clears throat> okay, it's gonna pull up, which one do you wanna receive against? And it pulls everything across. Now notice it pulls across my subs and my so my non-inventory part that I chose and my service item that I chose, okay? So if I save this, let me go look at the journal and I'll show you what happens behind the scenes on this, okay? So it saves everything. The, it goes the inventory offset account, I mean the inventory asset account goes up, the job materials account goes up, um, the subcontractor expense goes up and the inventory offset account goes up as well. So the entire balance goes against that inventory offset account. Then if I go in and enter now the bill, okay, so I'm gonna enter the bill and it's gonna tell me I have stuff open here. So I'm gonna click on this one. Now, first things first, the transaction journal here, this is for the item receipt. I want to make sure you see 360, 475, 250. So on this, I'm actually going to say that they charged us some shipping that I'm going to include in the cost of the cabinet pulls here. So we're going to say they charged us uh, $100 in shipping. So it's total 460, which raises the price of these cabinets. Okay. <clears throat> so now when I update this, I save this. 
Notice the balance is 1185 now, okay? 460 for these. When I go back to my item receipt, it automatically updates for me that 460, okay? But notice again that instead of at the time, at the item receipt time, if I receive on the item receipt non inventory parts and inventory, and um, if I receive on there non inventory parts and service items or any type of items besides inventory, it will allow me to do that, but it's going to actually uh, go into, again, the, the inventory offset account along with the actual inventory, okay? So naming this inventory offset account is good if you only do it for inventory, but if you do it also for some things like, uh, like the services, um, then maybe you want to name it uh, accounts payable pending or something like that or pending accounts payable unposted bills, something along those lines. Okay. So again, on another thing to note on the item receipt here, you cannot do negative items. So if I did cabinet pulls and here, I can't do negative quantities anymore. Okay, so uh, that's something to note. The other thing is, is that you're, if you're on an item receipt here, you don't have that expenses tab over on the side. So you can't enter an expense on an item receipt. I'm not quite sure why you'd want to, except to if you've trained people in the past, you know, you're right some people in the past to enter those on the, uh, on the expense tab. But that really should be happening on the bill anyway. Okay. Uh, I think that that are, you know, Oh, I'm sorry. There's one more thing. The the uh, if you are straight writing a check uh, instead of doing the whole PO enter uh, items receive items enter bills. If you're writing a check, you still do it the same process. So you go straight to the items tab and you enter the inventory item here. And once you save this, it isn't going to go to the inventory offset account because it's not going to be going to accounts payable. Okay, so it's going to go straight to inventory at that point, the inventory asset. And the same goes for credit card transactions, credit card, uh, creating credit card transactions. Um, you'd use that items tab just the same and it'll go straight into your credit card payable and into in inventory at that point. Okay. So again, I think it's a great added feature in 2012. I'm definitely excited for my clients to use this so we don't have any problems with inventory anymore. And uh, definitely, though, talk with your ProAdvisor or ISP about uh, the repercussions of implementing this and possibly test it ahead of time.